What's up everybody, my name is Brendan and this is Big Bear Be Creative. Welcome back to another Sunday photo editing video. This is actually the second time I'm recording this because for some reason my camera decided to turn off partway through the first time I did this. But yeah, so today we're gonna be uh, continuing on a little bit of what we did last week in terms of blending photos to get that perfect waterfall type photo. So last week we did two photos that we blended together. This week we're stepping up with three photos that we're actually be blending together. If you watch Friday's video where we finished off our kind of beginner photography, photography basic tutorial kind of thing, that's a very long name. But yeah, uh, when we finished that off, we finished that off with ISO. The last couple weeks we talked about shutter speed and aperture. So if you're interested in that, I suggest you guys go check those out. But in last Friday's video, I, t I tossed in a little spoiler for you guys or a little teaser on the photo that we're actually editing today. So that way you guys could make sure you're subscribing. So, you know, <laughs> so you're sticking around so you can actually watch these. So we're going to jump on over to my computer and I'm going to show you how I blend all these photos together and actually edit the final piece. So let's jump on over there. All right. So this is the photo that we're going to be editing today. Like I said, we're going to be editing three of them. We're blending them together into one final photo. So this is more of the base photo. However, it's not exactly ready yet, so we're not gonna start by doing the blending. First, I'm actually going to edit this specific photo just so I make sure it's correct before we start doing anything else. So this is supposed to be for my sky, but as you can tell, it's just a little bit overexposed for it. So what you're gonna see me do is actually come in and I'm just gonna toss up the AI Sky Enhancer all the way. As you can tell, it already brought things up very nicely. I am just going to help it out a little bit more by lowering a little bit of the highlight not that much <laughs> uh, but just lowering the highlights a little bit and then i'm actually going to take down a little bit of the exposure just to kind of create things make it look a little bit nicer because sure up here looks good but back here looks a little bit brighter that's because the sun was just peeking over uh, the forest line so it's hitting those back trees more than it's hitting the ones in front which is giving us that effect so now that we have the base set up for the rest of our layers to actually go on top of we'll start blending those in so i'm going to start with add a new image layer and we'll do 0006 wait for that to load and basically we're just going to be blending this this exposure is going to be for this rock face and for the water and i might blend it in a little bit with the rocks back here just kind of depends on how much brighter it makes those let's we'll click on the brush mask come in here add or change the opacity all the way up we're just going to crank this all the way up and then we'll come in and clean it up later just because there's so much that we're adding i'm just going to try to get this done a little quicker and we'll clean it up like i said after so click on here apparently even with this giant brush i still miss some of the corners all right I'll lower this back down we'll bring that in all right so now We'll take that off and then with the eraser tool we'll come in and clean up the haloing effect that blending over over the actual area that we're trying to blend kind of created so we'll just blend that in and if it goes on the rock a little bit that's no big deal for me because basically that's going to help create a more of a 3d effect with it that looks good i'm going to lower the opacity change it over to paint and just kind of bring this rock face up a little bit. It's not much, just a little bit. And that looks much nicer. All right, so now that that's all blended in, take one more look at it. Yeah, that'll be good. We'll click done. That's just going to finish off that actual brush mask itself. Then we're going to add the third one, stepping up from last week that we just had two. And you're just going to continue this as much as you want. So as many photos as you've taken, you're just going to keep adding them and brushing them in. You can still have to wait for them to load, but it's not as big of a deal as long as your computer is not performing many different things on top of what you're already doing. Click on the brush mask. Again, we're going to set this to 100. 
100, not 47. I said 100. All right, now we're just going to start blending this in. And it'll catch up to me in just a second. We'll blend this. And I don't want to touch too much on this top waterfall just because it's already very bright. So I'm just going to click on this eye again just to make sure I am grabbing everything that I wanted in on this one. And we'll click that off. Now again, I'm going to do a little bit more of a feathering just to kind of clean up the edges. Alright. Again, we'll take a look at what the original base image was and then where we are at now, which is a big, big difference. I can just... I was just checking the time on the camera to make sure I had enough time before it automatically shut itself off. Alright, so that's done, and now we can actually do actual editing portion of this itself, which all happens on an adjustment layer as long as you've already adjusted all your images themselves, because you could go into each one of these, like if I clicked on this one, and then I could click on my whatever workspace it is that you would use, I just have my own, and then I could edit this layer specifically so it doesn't affect everything else. So, in fact, here I might just come in and play with the highlights. There we go, now it's catching up. I'm just gonna lower them a little bit so it balances out the photograph, the photograph a little bit more. I don't know why I had a pause between photo and graph. The photograph, it's one word. All right, um, now we'll actually click on the image or adjustment image layer, whatever you want to call it, and then you can edit the full photo from there. So I'm just going to add a little bit of contrast because I really want to make that waterfall itself pop without making too big of a difference. Because back here seems a little bit dark compared to the waterfall because obviously it was on different shutter speeds, so they're going to be a little bit different. So I'm just going to Boost that up a little bit, and a little bit of clarity. And then I like to go into the advanced contrast and just play with them a little bit, just so I'm making sure I'm getting the right look. I'm brighten them too much. So I'll take again. I'll take that down a little bit. Just again, try to balance everything out a little bit more. I like to go a little bit darker here because it's bringing out a little bit more color here in the rock face and in the water a little bit as well. Then if I go to the right, that's going to darken some of the shadows. I feel like we do need a little bit just to again create a, a little bit more of a texture, especially for like again with this rock face that was a primary reason that I took this photograph because actually I lined it up and composed it this way because you can see the rock down here and then the rock up here. So it's kind of creating a little bit of symmetry with it jutting in, circling around and then going back out. So I thought that was quite nice. It took me a little while to actually set up my tripod because I think I had like one leg on the rock face and then two on a very slippery rock. It was a little weird, but I got it to actually work. And I'm just going to lower the top light just a little bit. And then I'll raise the bottom light a little bit more, just kind of balance out the light in the photograph itself a little bit better. Again, I'm just going to check the time on there because I don't want to have to do this a third time. <laughs> Alright, and we'll do a look. I like to play with the hue, saturation, and luminance here just because I want to kind of make that water look a little bit more correct to how it looked at the actual place where it had a more of a aqua hue to it. However, it wasn't like clear blue aqua water. So I want to make sure there's still a little bit of that green that's in there 
from all the algae or moss or whatever those uh, you can tell is covering a lot of these rocks there was a lot of it at this location i even bit the dust later when we were leaving thought i had a good foothold slipped and i hit pretty hard but luckily i'm pretty sure my camera's okay because we're watching this or you're watching this now which means i'm able to take things however it does look a little bit blurry whenever i'm editing the video but that might just be me editing if it looks a little blurry to you let me know down in the comment section because if it is i need to get that fixed obviously all right i'm going to add a bit of a vignette here and i'm going to bring it in more than where i actually want it because then i'm going to increase the size and then i want to feather it a bit more over that Still a little much. I'm gonna bring that out. The reason that I'm doing this is because I'm trying to create a little bit more of a focus on the waterfall itself. And then I'm gonna add a little bit of structure, and a little bit of sharpening to again just to help with this rock wall. And then I want to see if I can bring out any color within the rock itself. Again, I'm just checking the time. <laughs> uh. You'll see, probably would have seen me doing that a lot in this video. And I have an alarm going off. Ignore that. That's just telling me to eat lunch. <laughs> uh, all right, so let's take a look at what we had before. So what we have now looks quite nice. So I'm going to flash this up on the screen for you guys to view in a little bit of a bigger format and look at more of the detail, and then we'll wrap this video up. All right, so there it is, guys. I hope you enjoyed the process of creating this and that you learned a little something about how you can take multiple photos and blend them together into one. And if you did learn something, let me know down in the comment section. You could also let me know if you need anything more explained or if you would have edited something a little bit differently. I'd love to hear how you guys do all that yourselves or what your personal style is as well. Um, so make sure you're also checking out my social media. I'll link them here. Uh, you can see these kind of photos that I post, so you can get a little bit of a better grasp of what my style is and all that kind of stuff. You can also send me your photos. I love to kind of talk to you guys on how you edited them or what you guys like best or just find, talk about like locations too because I can tell you guys where this one is as long as you promise not to graffiti like the people that are here before you. So um, yeah, like I said, check me out on social media there. I would love to talk to you guys about that. Also, make sure you guys are bare pointing that like button. It really goes a long way in one, telling me that you guys are liking these videos and I keep making more for these. It also, it's also going to help promote it to other people who like this kind of content as well. And for people that like this kind of content, make sure you're subscribing. We do photo editing videos every Sunday, and then we also do the Friday how-to videos, so make sure you're subscribing for that. Also, check out my eco-conscious apparel link and my photo print link for this specific photo and for a bunch of others down in the description box below. So thank you for watching this video. Hope you guys have a great day. Be safe during this time, and go be creative.